Welcome to Revelation Unraveled. I'm your host, William Tapley, also known as the Third Eagle of the Apocalypse and the Co-Prophet of the End Times. The topic for this program is part four in our series on the Olivet Discourse. And I will be concentrating on the 28 verses where our Lord speaks about his second coming at the rapture. Jesus talks more about the rapture than any other person, place, or event in the entire Olivet Discourse. Now, even though the rapture is very important, we need to remember that very few Christians will be raptured. St. John says that only 144,000 will be raptured. And since there are more than a billion Christians on the planet, that means that more than 99.9% .9 of Christians living in the world today must go through the tribulation. Jesus' second coming at the rapture is one of his four comings in which he visits mankind. These four comings also reflect the four stages in a man's life. Number one, Jesus came as the babe of Bethlehem. And of course, every man starts life as a baby. At his second coming, at the rapture, Jesus comes as a bridegroom. And of course, most men experience marriage. Third, Jesus will come as a soldier, that is, at the Battle of Armageddon, which also reflects that stage in a man's life. And lastly, his fourth coming, Jesus comes as a judge, that is, as an elder statesman, and thus he reflects all four stages in a man's life. Now let's look at the eight times that our Lord refers to his second coming at the rapture in the Olivet Discourse. First, we will review the last five verses of the 15 victory verses, which we discovered in part number three, are divided into a 555 sequence. These 555 verses symbolize Mary's rosary, which is Jesus' weapon to defeat the Antichrist in the end times. Now, these last five verses of the 15 victory verse sequence are also the first five verses of the 28 verses in the Olivet Discourse, which describe the rapture. Jesus also mentions his second coming twice in these five verses. As it was in the days of Noah, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And they knew not until the flood came and swept them all away, so also shall the coming of the Son of Man be. Now let's look at the next verses, which refer to the rapture. Now in these next 10 verses, that is numbers 42 through 51, there are two major themes. Jesus says that we must be ready at all times because we do not know the day or the hour. Verse number 42, watch therefore, for you do not know at what hour your Lord will come. This is the third time Jesus refers to his coming. And in verse number 44, Wherefore be you also ready, for in such an hour as you know not, the Son of Man will come. That's the fourth time that he mentions his coming. In verse number 46, Blessed is that servant whom when the Lord comes shall find him so doing. That's the fifth time that our Lord mentions his coming. And our Lord continues in verse number 50. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day he does not expect, and in an hour he does not know. Once again, these themes that you cannot know the day or the hour, and to be ready at all time, is extremely important when Jesus is talking about the rapture. Now let's look at Jesus' parable of the five wise and five foolish virgins, which is a parable about the rapture. In chapter 25, Jesus continues talking about his second coming at the rapture, which of course refers to the marriage supper in heaven. In verse number one, Then shall the kingdom of heaven be like ten virgins, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Jesus is the bridegroom, and those very few who are fortunate enough to be raptured represent his bride. 
Now let's look at verse number 6. And at midnight there was cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Go you out to meet him. Notice here that although a cry is made, there are no trumpet fanfares, no archangels, and no raising of the dead. The rapture is private and personal. It is not at all like our Lord's third coming at Armageddon or his fourth coming at judgment. The timing at midnight does not refer to the time of each individual person's rapture, but rather this is a symbolic term, which means that the rapture occurs in the end times. Now in verse number 10, Jesus refers for the eighth time to his second coming at the rapture. Now while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they who were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And now let's look at verse number 13. Watch you therefore, because you know not the day or the hour. Notice that Jesus ends this section on the rapture with the exact same phrase that he began. Watch therefore, for you know not the day or the hour. Now in part number three on this Olivet Discourse, we discovered that Jesus does indeed tell us the month and the year of Armageddon. But it is significant that the rapture cannot be known. All the pre-tribs, post-tribs, and mid-tribs are simply guessing. And they could all be right. Personally, I believe that everyone who is raptured will be raptured at the best time for him or her. And not necessarily all at the same time. Thus we can conclude that although the rapture is extremely important, very few are going to be qualified to attend the marriage supper of the Lamb in heaven. On part number five in this series on the Olivet Discourse, I will be looking at the parable of the talents, which is a prophecy of the millennium. And I will be reviewing our Lord's forthcoming at judgment. Now, if you would like more information, simply write to the address you see on your screen.